the time to begin. Time to begin, yes. Mm -hmm. And the next speaker is Professor Nakamura. The title of the talk is Relaxation Tender for Extended Builders Models. Uh, Professor Nakamura, please. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I first want to thank you uh, for the invitation to present some of my uh, results in this mini symposium. Okay, so this is a, a joint study with uh, Duku, uh, Kimura, uh, Lin, and Tanuma. Uh, well, I'm sorry that uh, uh, today's talk, um, I can only uh, touch uh, inverse problem a little bit. Uh, so most of my talk is uh, rather uh, algebraic uh, with a very easy uh, analysis. Okay, so uh, this is the, the content of my talk today. Uh, first of all, please remember the abbreviation EBM, uh, DVS, which are uh, the extended Vargas model and the Boltzmann type viscoelastic system of equation. And also, one another you know, terminology I want you to remember is the relaxation tensors. Uh, although there are many uh, items uh, I, I wrote in this uh, content, but uh, summarizing all of these items, uh, the major aim of this talk is to give you a new uh, method to derive the relaxation tensor for the EBM. And uh, also, uh, after deriving the relaxation tensor, uh, the EBM can be converted to the Boltzmann type uh, viscoelastic system. And uh, I want to show uh, for this uh, DVS uh, that the solution of the initial boundary value problem uh, will decay exponentially in time. Uh, to introduce the EBM, uh, I have to prepare some notations. Uh, uh, omega is a bounded domain in RD, where D is a 2 and 3, and its boundary partial omega is a bit smooth and also connected. Uh, its outer unit normal is denoted by U, and I divide uh, partial omega into two parts, gamma D and gamma N. Uh, both gamma D and gamma N are non empty open sets. And the gamma D and gamma N does not intersect. Uh, for the case uh, D equal three, uh, there will be a, a non-trivial boundary uh, for the gamma D and gamma N. So I assume the boundaries are Lipschitz smooth. Uh, by U, uh, uh, it denotes the, the displacement vector. And by EU, it denotes the, the linear strain where this uh, little t is uh, the transpose of this uh, matrix number u. Uh, for the second order tensor A, B, and xi, and also the fourth order tensor C and D, I, I define the, the product uh, A and B as a provenance uh, product. And for the, the product between C and xi, and also C and D, I define them uh, uh, in this way, this way, where the I'm using the uh, Einstein summation convention. Uh, convention. Uh, the next, uh, I I have to introduce uh, several uh, definitions of symmetry, uh, which I think you know. Uh, there are uh, three. Uh, symmetry. Uh, one is the major symmetry, the second is the minor symmetry, and the third is the full symmetry. Uh, they are defined uh, uh, by the, the formula uh, given by this two for the, the first two symmetry, and for the third one, 
uh, if uh, the C satisfies the major symmetry is the minor symmetry, then we call that the C is a full symmetry. Okay. And uh, also, I define this uh, inequality C is smaller, uh, smaller uh, or equal B uh, by this uh, inequality or any xi. Uh, then, uh, what is the EDM? Uh, it is a, a spring dash plot model. Again, excuse me, what is double yes. dot? Uh, in, uh, this is a dot? Is it just dot? No. It is a scalar product of vectors, or what is that? It's double a dot. Ah, double dot. This is a, a provenius uh, uh, product. Ah, I see. Okay. I see. Ah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry about the too many notations, but uh -huh. yes. Uh, okay. So what's the spring dash plot model? Uh, it's a one of the spring dash plot models known, but which is a very important uh, nowadays uh, in the field of rheology and also the earth and planet science. Uh, uh, this is a, this uh, consists of the, the Maxwell model part and also several number of uh, Kelvin fork uh, models. I will show you next the cartoon picture of this uh, uh, EBM. Uh, it, it's like this one. Uh, these uh, Maxwell, it's denoted by M0, and uh, uh, Kelvin fork, uh, they are from K1 to Kn. They are connected in series, okay? And now uh, let's look at uh, the Maxwell part. Uh, it consists of the spring and also the dashboard. The spring has the elasticity tensor C0 and the stress tensor uh, C0S and uh, the strain tensor uh, E0S. And for the dashboard, uh, it has uh, viscosity eta zero and the uh, stress uh, tensor uh, sigma zero D and the strain tensor E zero D. Okay. Uh, and uh, also, uh, so similarly for the, for each uh, Kelvin forked uh, part Ki, uh, there is a there is a spring and also the dashboard. Okay. And then yeah, that dashboard is damper something. Yes, yeah, dashboard is exactly a damper. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes, it's like a piston. Okay. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, okay. Then the uh, if, let's look at this the the Maxwell part again. Uh, what is the sigma zero and E zero? Because the spring and dashboard are connected in series, uh, the, the stress sigma zero S and also the sigma zero D are equal. The, the common stress is denoted by sigma zero. And for the strain, uh, the, the, the strain of this M zero itself, V, will be the sum of the strain of this spring part and the dashboard part. And we consider in a similar way for this uh, Kelvin fork part, okay? Uh, now, uh, uh, for the, the coming argument, I will uh, assume for each EI's uh, sigma i uh, to belong in this function space where uh, R C sim D times D, uh, this is a set of uh, 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 set of all symmetric uh, real uh, uh, matrices, okay? And so, so by assuming this, then uh, consequently, uh, also the E and sigma, uh, E and sigma is a total strain and uh, the total stress of the EVM. It, it will also has to be in the same function state. Okay. 
Uh, then, uh, what is the equation of the motion for the EBM? Uh, it's given in this way. Uh, this is the equation of motion you know, when there is no external force. And where uh, the sigma, sigma is, uh, is given by this equation. And uh, this one is related to the same zero and the ki part. Okay. And uh, 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 also the the there is the, the e the this is the total strain uh, which is the sum of the the each ei. And again, this uh, each ei is given by the same zero and ki. It's a bit complicated, but uh, uh, I promise you <laughs> to give some kind of impression. This equation has a very interesting property and has to be studied uh, further. Okay. Uh, Again, but uh, in, in principle, the system is linear. Yes, of course, a linear. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I see. Yes. So it, it has in this form, but uh -huh. uh, there's uh, another augmented part. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, yes. So this is giving the, the, the structure of this uh, equation. Uh, of course, it's not uh, enough explanation to just uh, make you understand uh, right now. But uh, let's uh, move on, and then you will gradually see uh, what's the, the type of equation we are uh, considering. Uh, OK, so for the viscosity eta i, and uh, eta i, I assume it, it is in this function space. And for each elastic tensor ci, I assume it, it, it has the full symmetry, and also it belongs to this function space. Uh, not only that, the uh, eta i and c i also, uh, also uh, I ask, uh, for, for eta I and c uh, i, I also assume they satisfy this inequality. So they are both bounded from view. Uh, here, mu is a positive constant, and it doesn't depend on the x, and also this uh, index, index i. Okay. Uh, uh, this i, i is uh, just uh, the uh, identity, identity uh, of both order tens. Uh, so I, I gave you the, the equation uh, in a very, how to say, very uh, complicated way. Uh, but uh, this part can be uh, uh, put it in a more concise way, uh, which will be of the, this form. I don't know whether uh, this this expression will help you to understand the data uh, for the, the previous uh, the system in the equation uh, consistent of one, two, and three. Okay. But anyway, uh, what is the, the relaxation tensor? Okay. Uh, this relaxation tensor uh, delays the instantaneous change of the right-sided total strain, uh, which I denote by the E dot T. The dot means the T derivatives of the E uh, to the, the total strain, sigma T. Uh, now, I consider this as uh, a uh, causal Convolution operator R of a one fourth mechanical system. Uh, one fourth mechanical system is like the input output uh, system. Okay. And the uh, one fourth means only the, for the input, you only get the uh, one output. Okay. Uh, and uh, what does it say here means the, uh, there exists a fourth order. L infinity omega tensor value distribution GP, such that uh, this uh, the the relation operator R, uh, which is relating the sigma and the E dot, can be given in this uh, convolutional form. 
So G convolution uh, to the E dot. And uh, uh, we will know uh, just uh, uh, by this setup, uh, this uh, GT turned out to satisfy uh, its zero for T negative. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So this one itself is already uh, the, uh, the constitutive equation. Because this is a relating the sigma to the E, but not the E itself, but the E dot. Okay. Uh, then, uh, then the uh, once having this sigma uh, using the G, then the, we can have uh, this kind of a uh, equation of motion. Uh, this is the the this is the. This corresponds to the, the Boltzmann type disco elastic system of equation. Okay. Uh, right now, we haven't gotten the, the relaxation tensor G yet, but uh, uh, what we are going to do is to derive uh, this G, the relaxation tensor G. Uh, to derive the G, we, uh, we will a priori assume that the G satisfies the following condition. The first is, uh, as I, we uh, already uh, uh, consider, uh, if that uh, the, the, the G is coming up as a convolution of the, the, the uh, relation operator in the one port system, then G has to satisfy this kind of condition. And, and not only that, we will assume uh, G has this kind of uh, uh, regularity. And also, uh, we assume G satisfies the minor symmetry. G is a, uh, also the um, tensor. So, G, for that, also the tensor G, we assume the minor symmetry. And then the, the major aim is, as I uh, mentioned before, but let me just uh, repeat it. So the, 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 the first important aim is to derive a new method. And why uh, a new method is uh, necessary is because the known method does not uh, handle the, the general case. And after that, uh, getting the relaxation tensor, we want to study the property of the relaxation tensor and to also uh, examine the, the exponential decay property for the solution to the initial boundary value problem, value problem of the BBS. Okay. Uh, uh, well, we, we also have uh, another kind of uh, consecutive equation. Uh, 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 it's given in the, the following way. Uh, uh, e dot can be expressed in terms of the sigma. Okay? Uh, if we assume uh, this kind of a condition. Uh, Jim, this excuse me, Jim, could you please clarify the point? What does it mean to construct relaxation tensor? Yeah, what, what is that's, that? uh, that's the point. Of, uh, yeah, construction is uh, the, the major aim. Yes, we, haven't, we haven't yet constructed the, the G. But to construct is uh, to, uh, to describe in, in explicit form or what? To construct? The... Uh, the construct means, uh, yeah, in an explicit form. Uh -huh. What information is needed to construct the relaxation tensor? Ah, so the, the, that's what I explained to you. Uh, so we consider the, the relaxation tensor as the, the kernel of the composition which relate the sigma and the E dot. And it was denoted by R, R capital. Yes, yes. Uh, that I was the, the relation of the uh -huh, between the uh -huh. sigma and the E dot. Yeah. And consider it as the, the causal uh, one-fold uh, one system. Uh -huh. So is it an inverse problem that you're going to have something about you from which you will recover R, G or R, or is it something different? Well, of course, uh, 
it's this part is not itself is not exactly an inverse part. It's a modeling part. Okay. Okay. But in principle, uh, from the physical viewpoint, uh, the decreasing of solution in such a system is quite expectable. Yes. Yes. But due, due to the presence of uh, dam dampers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But uh, still, there is a uh, many uh, delicate delicate uh, problems inside. Uh -huh. And of course, you can never see uh, this is the spring and dust spot in, uh, in the media. This is uh, coming from the human understanding. Mm -hmm. It's not the visible at all. But uh, it's easy to imagine from this uh, spring and dust spot model what kind of a property you can expect. Okay, so that's why, anyway, the engineer. Engineering people are, are using this, uh, and there are still uh, many, many studies. Yes, going on. Uh, okay, so this is another, uh, this is also giving another expression between the E dot and also the sigma, uh, but in a, in a different way. The, the role is somehow uh, changed. The pre previously, what uh, we were looking for is a sigma expressed in terms of the E dot. This is a, in an opposite way. E dot is expressed in terms of the sigma. And uh, you can get uh, this kind of a uh, uh, constitutive equation uh, under this assumption. Okay. To derive this uh, uh, integral differential equation, uh, I have used uh, these uh, two equations, which will which will um, follow from the, the the equation five. Uh, equation five is uh, some the concise concise uh, description of the the one two three. Okay, so. Uh, so what kind of the, the initial boundary value problem we can have for the EDM? Uh, this is a, the initial boundary value problem for the U and the phi bar, where phi bar is the, given as the phi zero phi one two phi n. And each phi i is the EI of D. This is the strain of the dashboard. And then uh, the, the sigma here uh, can be expressed as a C0 psi. Uh, psi is, uh, psi is uh, the strain of the spin part of the, the Maxwell component. And the psi can be given uh, in terms of the EU and the supply. Okay. So, so uh, well, still, uh, you know, uh, not only this equation, but uh, there is uh, this kind of uh, the equation. Uh, if you know the sigma, you can consider this equation as an uh, ordinary equation for the phi zero and phi. Okay. So uh, let's uh, put uh, uh, that ordinary differential equation part in the following form. Uh, so uh, let uh, uh, Phi be given in this way, and then the phi and the psi satisfy uh, this uh, system of ODE. If we assume this uh, EU dot is known, and uh, this uh, LB is a uh, 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 tensor block uh, matrix uh, given in this way, uh, that means that each each uh, each component is a fourth order tensor. Uh, it looks complicated, but uh, this one has a very nice uh, structure. Okay. Uh, and then the, just please just look at this guy. Uh, then uh, because uh, sigma is given in this C0 side. And then the, our target is uh, one to uh, get the 
relation between sigma and the EU dot. And then uh, please look at this one. Then uh, if you can solve this ODE, and then look at the one one component, one one component uh, of this solution, uh, which describes the psi by solving this, and then uh, also consider this a sigma zero, then uh, you should be able to get the relation between the sigma and this EU dot, right? That's the basic idea. Okay, uh, well, there's something here, but let me skip. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, uh, before uh, introducing the, the new uh, method to derive the relaxation test, uh, let's look at uh, the usual method. Uh, let me explain you uh, under the very uh, easy assumption. So I assume this uh, the eta j is cj, each eta j is cj are independent of x. And also uh, this uh, cj satisfies this uh, commutativity condition. Uh, okay. And uh, why I, am, I, I assume this commutativity condition is because I'm going to use the Rapkatsu transform method and to invert uh, the inverse, uh, to compute the inverse Laplace transform, uh, you know, we have to do the, the partial fraction expansion. For that one, we need to have this kind of commutativity assumption. Okay, once we assume this commutativity assumption, uh, we can have that uh, this uh, uh, elasticity tensor can uh, be represented uh, using the uh, uh, spectral projection PK. And this uh, PK, it will be common. It doesn't depend on this uh, the index uh, L. L is from zero to N. So- Ken, Ken what is the uh, physical meaning of this commutation, commutativity? Uh, it? it's it's just a technical condition. Uh -huh. uh, or in another word, that uh, well, isotropic elastic tensor will satisfy this kind of uh, condition. Also, some uh, cubic uh, anisotropic case it satisfies this kind of condition. Uh -huh. But for for the uh, transversely isotropic case, it doesn't usually satisfy this kind of condition. So this is a very, very strong condition. Yes, and uh, it is just uh, the conjecture, uh, it is just assumption on the structure of media, medium, something like this. Yes, yes, that's right. But uh, but uh, it's coming uh, from a part of the, the physical uh, consideration. It's just a uh -huh. uh, technical. and. Uh, the major aim of introducing the new method to derive the, the relaxation tensor is to, to avoid this kind of strong assumption. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, I think you remember the previous uh, integral uh, differential equation, uh, which I gave uh, in this form. So let's take the Laplace transform of this equation. Uh, then uh, this E dot to T, after taking the Laplace transform, it will uh, change to S times E hat. E hat is the Laplace transform of E. Okay. And uh, what about the, this part? Uh, it will uh, change to, to this, this kind of a form, where each AI, uh, is uh, just the inverse of uh, this eta i. Uh, well, uh, you can easily see some of the correspondence. Uh, this one will change to this one, and also this one will change to this one. Okay. Now, for this part, you need a, a little bit of computation. Anyway, this will change to this one. Okay, because uh, from the 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 relaxation tensor which has to satisfy some 
uh, relation between the sigma and the E dot uh, in the Laplace transform uh, setting, uh, it has to satisfy this equation. This is a G hat S. This is a, a relax, the Laplace transform for the, the relaxation term. So it has to satisfy this kind of uh, uh, equation. Okay. Then uh, comparing this one with uh, this one, then you can easily see G hat S is an inverse of MS. Uh, of MS. Okay. Uh, then uh, consider the, please remember the, the, the representation of this MS part using the, the spectral projection. Then uh, this MS inverse will be uh, given this form, where DSK, each DSK uh, for the K can be given in this way. Now, DSK just becomes a number. Okay, so, so you can see that it's easy to uh, consider the inverse Laplace transform of this uh, G hat S. Okay, uh, skipping the, the detail, the, we have the following theorem. The GT is given in this way, it's a bit complicated. Uh, so you can see some uh, power of t and some exponential function, where the exponent is the R, Rj, uh, RLK, K. Uh, this is the negative real number. OK, and uh, uh, there's some the, the um, this uh, the JL uh, well, here the, using the, the different notation, but uh, the sum of the JL, JL, uh, JL is the, the multiplicity, multiplicity of the 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 root the roots of this uh, DSK equal zero, and uh, the sum of the multiplicity uh, will be equal to the n plus one. And this coefficient is a non-zero non real number. And I plus T is the, the unit step function uh, defined in the following way. Okay. Again, it is uh, some analog of Kelvin representation for uh, fundamental tender for Lamy system, maybe. No? Uh, Yes, yes, it will, that's right. Yes, when you consider for constant, for constant coefficients. Yes, some... yes, that's oh, right. That's uh -huh. right. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Uh, and then uh, let me give one remark. Uh, 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 you can you can do do this kind of the, the, the usual method, even for the case that the each elastic tensor belongs to uh, a so-called broken so broken sovereign space. Uh, but the exponent of the, the sovereign space R must be uh, larger than uh, uh, D over two. And also the the where the the, the interface of this uh, the the element of CL in this uh, sovereign space must be the same, and uh, they must be also compactly embedded in it. And then and, uh, you can generalize the previous the usual method using the joint spectral measure. Okay. So okay. So I I have uh, maybe small time. Uh well. Maybe uh, in play. Uh, so it, LB was already the, the tensor block matrices. The general form of the uh, tensor block matrices is given in this way. Okay. The each block is uh, the fourth order tensor. And uh, the, the symmetry is a full symmetry. Okay. And, and for this kind of a, a tensor block matrices, we can uh, define the transports uh, quite similar to the usual transports of the matrix. And also the product between the tensor uh, block matrices 
Uh, let's consider another tensor block matrix uh, J, and then consider the, the product of the H and J, then uh, the IL uh, block component, blockwise component, uh, can be defined in this way. This is exactly the same as the, the, the product of the usual matrix. Okay, and also the product uh, with the tensor block vector, which of this form uh, is also defined uh, as usual, uh, like, likewise uh, the, the matrix and the vector case. Okay, uh, and then uh, what about the inner product uh, between the tensor block uh, vector? Uh, the inner product is given in this way. Here again, the, uh, this, uh, this column is the, the provenance inner product. Okay. And now uh, with this notation, uh, I can explain you the outline and, and the idea of the uh, First, uh, we introduced uh, the C. This is a tensor block a diagonal matrix with a block diagonal component C0 to Cn. And the D is the square root of uh, this C. Okay. Uh, please notice that the, each C0 to Cn, uh, we assume uh, these are positive. So, so we can take the square root of this uh, C. Okay. Then uh, also uh, we introduced uh, uh, another tensor block matrix, uh, which is uh, has a little bit complicated form. Uh, first, it has the diagonal part, and also the, the other part, uh, where the other part consists of M and its uh, uh, transport. The M is given in this way. Okay. Again, again, excuse me, you have four minutes. Okay, okay, I, I will try to finish. Uh -huh. Okay, then the importance is that the previous LB can have this kind of uh, factorization. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, okay. Then, uh, okay, let me skip some part. Okay, anyway, the what is the GT? The GT can be given as a 1-1 one, one, uh, tensor block component of this one. And uh, this 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 part this part is uh, just a zero extension of this uh, matrix. Okay. And uh, the, uh, the 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 eigenvalue of uh, a a is uh, all uh, we are negative. Okay. Uh, well, I have to skip. Uh, well, from that formula, uh, we can get the property of the relaxation tensors, uh, the causality, also the positivity through symmetry, and, and also the, some smoothness, and also, also the, the estimate of the derivative. And then having all of this, uh, we, can, we can have the uh, the exponential decay of the solution for the initial boundary value problem for the Boltzmann type viscoelastic system by using our previous result. And that was about the uniform decay of the solution for the Boltzmann type viscoelastic system. Okay, so uh, let me give you one interesting uh, question. Uh, this is about the exact boundary controllability for the, the EDS, especially let's fix the isotropic case. Uh, there are two results known. There's a, a positive statement uh, that uh, there is some uh, controllability. But on the other hand, there's a negative statement. And uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm really puzzled with uh, this uh, statement. And uh, if anybody who are interested, uh, I I really uh, want to help me to consider this question. Thank you for your attention. 
Thank you very, very much. Okay, please, questions, comments? May I ask a question? Yes. Again, uh, what kind of controllability are we speaking about? Ah, it's a exact boundary controllability. Uh, exact in which space? Uh, uh, well, uh, so... so and, and also uh, exact controllability for sufficiently large time? Or no, 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 for any time, because the, the solution for any has... Time. Yes, for because any. the solution has the, the exponential decay property. So, so it, it, so how to say, the state is changing very quick. So, uh, anyway, this, uh, this model, the, how to say, phenomena uh, is a, Quickly change. It's like the elasticity. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And what is admissible controllability? Admissible. Well, this is a this is a question. Uh, so this uh, Narukawa, Narukawa, he's a Japanese. Uh huh. Uh, he he uh, stated the he made a statement in the in the, uh, the the proceeding of this uh, the, the conflict, uh, in, which was in, I think, around 1984. But he never gave a detailed proof. Yes. And uh -huh. the, his idea is very good, very natural. Uh -huh. And uh, here's uh, the Lugeri. He's uh, really the expert uh, doing the, the control. Uh, but he did not also publish the paper in the usual journal form. Uh -huh. Somehow, like uh, just uh, like a manuscript, something. But I I believe that what he is is saying is uh, true. But uh, I I'm very much interested in the this Narukawa's. Uh, statement uh -huh. because the Lugerin, the I don't know the Lugerin uh, result can uh, can really give a very negative negative uh, answer to the, this kind of spin dash for me. Negative means absence of controllability. You mean? Uh, no, no. Uh, I mean uh, because. Uh, he gave a, a, a counter example, but uh -huh. uh, this counter example may be very special. I see. Okay, thank you. Uh, more questions? We have one minute for more comments, questions. No questions. Again, thanks a lot. Thank very, you very much. Very, yeah, thank, thank you. Thanks thank a lot. Really, very, very interesting talk.